Mary, what was your favorite board game of the month? This? Was it the one where you chewed up all the pieces? Yes, it was. This is the best of board game geek. Everybody, I'm Mike. I'm Nick. That was our dog, Mary. And it's time for the Best of Board Game Geek, where we wrap up everything that's happening, all things geek. All things geek. Specifically, board game geek. Indeed. Uh, we've got some news to talk about. We've got the hottest games that everyone is, is uh, receiving from Kickstarter, talking Indeed. about, playing, clicking on. We have some things that we're personally interested in. Let's get into it with the news. <laughs> So as always, we start with a Board Game Geek store update. One thing to know that people are always excited for is there are new bits for uh, Quacks and Quillenberg, or rather a restock for that in Orleans. Lots of the games that you've been looking for. There's also new uh, bits for Calico, these really cool buttons, a new accordion storage system for Food Chain Magnate, and much more. There's games you can get, and one thing that's really cool that's coming in the next store update that we're gonna talk about again is new Board Game Geek merch. They have these, uh, kind of like watercolor, splashy board game geek shirts that are coming that look super duper cool. We got to see a little bit of a preview of one the other day and it looks amazing. So they come in this kind of charcoal color similar to this and purple, cannot wait for that. So check that out. All these things are coming just in time for the holidays. So make sure you get your games deluxified and stuff so you can enjoy them with the family. The next bit of Board Game Geek news is that it is time for the Board Game Geek Secret Santa. This is one of my favorite things in board games all year. I think it's such a cool idea that Board Game Geek does a big Secret Santa. So what you can do, you have to sign up for the Secret Santa. I think the cutoff date is November 7th, so you have about a week to sign up for it. But what you'll do is you'll sign up, you'll be randomly given another person who is in this Secret Santa, and you will spend at least $50 on a game for them. It'll be a game that you know that they want, and then you will be able to get them a game. And then someone will also get you a game because everyone is paired up with somebody. So it's just a really, really cool concept where you don't really know what you're getting. And it's just, this, I don't know, I love that giving spirit. And I think it's a really cool thing to do across this like, big, big spans that is BGG. I think it's awesome. So the Board Game Geek Secret Santa is live right now. Make sure to sign up for it because time is running out. So that was some Board Game Geek news, some really cool stuff going on, but let's get over to the table. Let's talk about the hottest games of the month. All right, it's gonna be the hottest games of the month. These were games that were all over the hottest. Some of them stayed on here all month yeah. and just games that were really all over the place. So let's go ahead and get to number 10. So number 10 is a game that um, came out a little while ago. This is Cthulhu Death May Die. Yeah. And I'm really intrigued by this game, mostly because there's so many people I know who do not like generally these big Simon games who love Cthulhu Death May Die. Yeah, it's one of those things I'm like, okay, what do we, like we, we haven't honestly, we haven't ever been in front of it, been able to no. crack open the box and take a look at it ourselves. But it's like Rob W. Eric Lang. So like yeah. it's good designers and stuff. But like one of our best friends, Matthew, like does not like these kinds of games. And it's one of his favorite games. So we're like, and there's okay. some of the content creators <laughs> watching, and they were talking about how it's like their favorite game. And I'm just like, man, I really, really, because we're not really into the Cthulhu theme. We're also not really into these kind of like giant games like this with, you know, humongous Cthulhus. Cthulhu Death May Die is uh, up on the hotness right now. And people just, I'm so intrigued by this game because people really, really love it. Number nine is Endless Winter Paleo Americans. We Americans. just played this, actually. We just played this. I played it a few times you back have, yeah. when it was uh, during its campaign and stuff. But you yes. Played it on like Tabletopia, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is a, uh, a worker placement deck building game. There's been many, you know, now it's kind of a, a hit thing it's to do. Thing. You have Lost Ruins thing. of Arnok, Dune Imperium and stuff. Yeah. This one is uh, about kind of early man, and, mm -hmm. and you are uh, using your workers to go to these. There's only four action spots. There is, yeah. <laughs> and from that, you're getting uh, different kind of cards, like different kind of worker cards and your stuff. Elders because and stuff like that. Your yeah. elders, when you go to do an action, you typically will need to spend some amount of labor yeah, to like kind your of- currency. Yeah, your currency to kind of get more out of that action, which is where the card play goes in because you can play down cards for their labor values. Certain elders and stuff will be more suited to this specific action. will give you a bonus if you're taking like the hunting action, yeah. for example, the animal action. Uh, or, or you know the ones that kind of move your people around the area, control part of the map. And so it does a really good job of kind of blending the card play with the worker placement where yeah. you can spend multiple cards on a turn to as kind of you want. morph yeah, that yeah. turn and, and really power it up and how you spend your cards and when. 
really kind of is the, the center of It was of cool. Each round. I really enjoyed it. We played just the base game. There's a whole bunch of different oh modules, gosh, yeah. which I'm really interested in. Um, yeah, it was really, really fun. I liked it a lot. It's got great Miko art. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is one I've been interested in for a long time. I just don't really like to play new games digitally. So Mike had played it with our yeah. friend Crook a bunch, but I had a chance to play it. We got to play it now, and I'm, I'm really into it. I like it It's a really lot. fun. I really want to explore some of those modules. There's yeah. so much already going on in the game, but it also kind of like could really use those modules to, yeah. to just to add more variety. There's mm -hmm. a ton in that box, obviously. So uh, it's hitting people's hands now, which is obviously yes. when things the typically re hit yeah. the hotness after their original campaign. Exactly. That is Endless Winter Paleo Americans at number nine. Number eight's pretty much always here. This is Ark Nova. People still love Ark Nova. People it's around. still talk about Ark Nova. People are still playing Ark Nova. I'm guessing a lot of people are gonna get Ark Nova for like we, Christmas. We just replayed Ark Nova. We did so just yeah, Ark Nova the other day. We're all in on it. Yeah, so I mean, it's Ark Nova. It's here every month. We really, really enjoy it. And uh, it's number four on the hot, number four on overall BGG rankings. So yeah. people still really enjoy it. People are really enjoying it. Of course, they announced uh, the upcoming expansion. I think it'll hit maybe this time next year. That's my guess, yeah. Uh, adding water animals, kind of adding a little bit more variety in certain terms of that just card gonna keep it display. Around. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what we're always about. Like, give me well, more animals when we and just played to it, do. When we just played it, we played the new boards, like kind of like promo boards they yeah. had. Yep, they and my some... thing is, I'm like, honestly, just give me new boards. I, I love agree. just the slight differences they have. They're not just, major ever. No, no never. It, it, but they give you just a little bit of like, yeah. oh, this is something I can do that someone else can That's can't. one of those games where I'm like, I, I want, if we're gonna have expansions, I kind of want them to be small. I'm rather than like big, like, let's change sure. a whole bunch of stuff about the game. Sure. Nonetheless, we'll have to see. But Ark Nova's pretty much always here. It's number eight. It's really fun. So number seven is by the designer of Root, and uh, nice. this is kind of the um, this is kind of the uh, next in this series because they Cole also did Pax Premier, yes. and this is kind of the next now. This is John Company. So John Company is is again based off of like kind of British history and stuff like that is what it's based around. And this one is about kind of like the rise and fall of the East India Company is yeah. kind of what it is. And it's like yeah, it's like this. Um, uh, uh, it was on Kickstarter. It's a Kickstarter exclusive, so it's not even going to retail. Right. But yeah, you're like kind of like wealthy British families, and you are trying to like essentially get your like kids and kind of like cajoling for positions in the East India Company and just in general <laughs> and kind of like society Working and trying to nepotism. get your kids into like good spots and sure. stuff like that. But there's like a lot of negotiation. It's kind of semi co op, but you're like making a bunch of promises and breaking a bunch of promises and stuff like that. It seems like a game we will not really enjoy. No, but I imagine there's a lot of people who really, really love, love it. Well, people you know? love Pax Pamir. And at, yes. our, at a local con recently, our good friend Shay uh, was playing it, and I was just like, "Hey, Shay, is there any chance I like this game?" And he was just like, "No." And I was like, "All right, cool." <laughs> and then I was just because I was like, "Hey, cool." Like people, but we love know we're in the game. minority there. Totally, totally right. <laughs> it just doesn't seem like my kind of game. This one also doesn't seem. But people are super, super into it. Yeah. Cole's got such a good reputation as a designer with Root and Pax Premier, two games that are incredibly popular. Yeah. So people are super into John Company. It's been on the hotness, and that's number seven. So number six is maybe the coziest game about dragons of all time. Or it's flame yeah, crap. Or just of all time. It's so it's, cute. It's about artisan dragons who are helping out people doing like blacksmith it's one and of the baking and stuff. It's a wonderful theme. It's a, a great production. We have a copy of it. Uh, and it's a game where you are, are kind of moving a dragon to different locations in the town. There's more locations kind of get, get yeah. uh, put in as the game goes. And you're going there to basically get resources, make use of the dragons that are there and kind of fulfill contracts uh, via these kind of like the enchant action. You can either mm -hmm. kind of go and gather goods, get a bunch of stuff, uh, and make use of one of the dragons. Each of the types of artisan dragons will give you an ability. Um, and then you can then enchant where you kind of are making the buildings more powerful because you're gonna be yeah. filling out a contract, basically returning the goods that are showing on this card. You'll get some points and then you enchant that building that you're at, which makes that building more valuable because now it'll start to give you even more resources yeah. as you visit later in the game. Yeah. If I go to your place and I visit and you got your dragon there, yeah. it's gotta give you like yeah, a, little a little piece of bread, little a, little, something, something. a little gift, you know, a little how, how do you do today? Um, but this is a game that's just like very much we were talking about in the center of like the kind of cozy game the, renaissance. The cozy that revolution in. that's happening right now. The yeah. cozy revolution. Games are like just very kind of comfort forward. You have like the calicos of the world and stuff like that. Flamecraft very much fits in that world where it's just a world I want to live in because yeah, like cute. I could have like a, a dragon make me like a kebab and I'm like, this is great. I, this is where I want to live. And the dragons forever. have such cute, the dragons are named like mulch and stuff. Oh, I'm just the like, names are off the hook. They're so, so adorable. Good. There's fancy dragons, which are like end game scoring, but it's like they're called fancy dragons. They're really beautiful and stuff. Yeah. They'll give you end game scoring points, but it's, it's really simple. Cool. So uh, gathering roots resources, using those resources to enchant buildings, uh, collecting dragons to place those artisan dragons into the buildings and stuff like that as you go visiting around town. 
it's just a, it's a nice walkabout town day yeah. with dragons, Flamecraft. It's really great. I'm personally a big fan. I can't wait to show it to you. The yeah. solo works well. That's what I have played. That's right. Uh, it's cozy as can be. <sighs> That's number six, Flamecraft. Number five, it, it, at this point, is here every single month, kind of like Ark Nova. And I think it's going to be here for a long time because that is Oathsworn yes. Into the Deepwood, which has their their uh, essentially second printing yeah. out on Kickstarter right now. It's doing fine. <laughs> um, Oathsworn. Well, People are obsessed with this game. I mean, we talk about every single month, right? But we've heard like, a few people now say, at least in their opinion, that it's better than Gloomhaven. It's yeah. obviously a big similar thing where you're leveling up characters and yeah. you're kind of going around finding monsters and stuff, but people are really into the gameplay. This is multiple and people have, that's pretty have, high praise to say, hey, I think uh, I like yeah. this better than like the number one game of all yeah. time. There's a lot of people who I've said this, it's their favorite campaign game. And I'm yeah. just like, wow, man, people love, yeah. this is one of those games, like this has climbed, kind of we're talking about Cthulhu, Cthulhu Death May Die, of like, I just really want to try this game. Yeah. This is now at the top of my want to try list because so many people around us have played it and have loved it. And I know we've talked about this for every month now for like six months about this game. But it just seems really, really cool, and people are so, so into it. It's on Kickstarter right now. It's crushing, and yeah, I yeah. think people are kind of like everyone keeps hearing about this game, so people have been backing it, and so uh, Oswald's gonna be around for a while. And honestly, that's probably okay. Number four is a game by Panasaurus, and this is The Wolves, are a game with a big old eye on the cover. You've probably seen it if you've been on BGG because it's been mm -hmm. all over the hotness. It's got a big old wolf. Eye it's a very there. evocative cover. It pulls yes, it you is. in, and as you look in the eye, you see wolves within the eye, wolves within the wolf. Oh, there's wolves within the eye. Yeah. <laughs> this is ultimately an action selection, yeah. area control. You're trying to build the best, most dominant pack of wolves yeah, which you is can cool. to kind of dominate the board. Uh, lure like lone wolves and, and make them part of your yeah. pack because you're just kind of the and most some of your like, wolves can get lured away and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. So and you're trying to kind of control the board. So if I go into your area and you can hunt prey and stuff, if I'm not like as strong as you are in the region that you're in, I might lose some of my pack to you because yeah. you're gonna go for the alpha, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. And those are kind of like fun things and a, a cool idea of like yeah. um, wolf pack mentality and stuff. Well, it's just and, like we and talked about the this social, you we know. We recently did on BG here a top 10 games we want to see and um, top 10 themes we want to see. And one of mine was like true animals where it's like, it's yeah. about animals, but it's about how animals actually are, not like anthropomorphized animals like Everdell or something like that. And this is kind of cool like that because you're a pack of wolf, but you're like upgrading your pack and you're trying to get, you're trying to get your, you expand your range and stuff, but you're, you can get lured away. You can lure other wolves away. I think it's a really cool idea. And it kind of falls into that, like, hey, this is kind of like an animal based game where the animals are acting kind of how they would in real life. And so yeah. I'm very intrigued by the wolves. Well, yeah, yeah, especially with the action selection, you're actually flipping over the kind of uh, tiles of the board. That's going to kind of set up like where you can operate out of in the next round. Yeah. So it seems very much kind of like a almost programming, prolonged yeah, programming yeah. game. Yeah. Where you really kind of kind of think about the next moves ahead, which yeah. is uh, really interesting. So I think we're going to have a chance to try this soon. I'm very intrigued. Yeah. Uh, just because, I don't know, wolf Seems culture cool. is kind of cool. Yeah, so. wolf culture. Hashtag wolf culture in the, in the comments. wolf culture up. in the comments. That is the wolves at number four. Number three is a big civilization game called Mosaic. Mosaic. Um, What's the mosaic of your civilization indeed. as you see the, the bits and pieces through time? So Mosaic is back on Kickstarter right now with an expansion, the yes. Disasters and War expansion, or War and Disasters. Um, but we've actually got to play uh, Mosaic a couple times. times. We actually yeah. really like it. Um, it's a big, big civilization game, but it's very... The turns are very, very it's snappy. Distilled down to very simple mechanisms. Yeah. It's an action selection game by Glenn Drover, and it's kind of very evocative, like Raccoon Tycoon, also by Glenn Drover, where the types of actions you can do it's are not down. complicated. Yeah. They are quick and easy. The game should be that you take your turns one after the other, after the other, pop, after pop, the pop. other. I'm gonna do and this, boom, now you go. I'm gonna do this, of, boom. Yeah, you're kind of going back and forth between like building up uh, your production and then doing production actions to gain your resources, then spending those resources on the wonders of the world. Developing new technologies is, a, is the core yeah. of the Building game, I think. Building new cities, that kind of stuff. Cities yeah. and stuff as you populate the map. Uh, and it's a lot of set collection because all these, yeah. most of these cards will have tags on them mm -hmm. and then you'll get other cards that will be like for every one of these like builder tags, which is like an orange hammer, you'll get points. And so you're kind yeah. of building out this set collection. You're kind of focusing on the pillars of civilization. Doing a little bit of like nine tags. area control kind of stuff because yeah. you get points if you control a region. Um, and then there's like military stuff in it, but the military just gives you more power. So it's not like a fighting thing. There's no like kicking each other out. It's not like area control in that way where there's like fighting it's very, stuff. It's not war centric. But it's very, very, it's not like I'm saying a simple game, but it's it's pretty stripped down. But again, the turns are so fast. It's like, I'm running my stone production. You can go. And it's just yeah. like, 
it's boom, 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 boom. So two players, it just goes back, 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 yeah. back, back. We I had actually a, really like it. Yeah, we had a chance to interview the designer of the game, Glenn Drober, yeah. and he was saying that was the whole point, was like civilization games can be so So long huge. And so big. And so his goal was to try to make one that really speeds things up and makes it takes away a lot of the um, the grinding I would say yeah. out of the game. Yeah. Um, and just makes it easy to operate and get to the fun stuff of like building up really yeah. cool things in cities and stuff. Yeah, it's really cool. We like Mosaic a lot. It's number three. Number two is a game that I want to try so dang badly because I love the theme. Right it looks cool. This here. is uh, Pompero. So this is about um, essentially wind energy in Uruguay. Yeah. So this is like based in reality is that uh, Uruguay does not have a ton of like natural resources. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they're like, we got to figure out the energy uh, crisis effectively. And they've gotten really into like wind technology, yeah. solar and stuff to a degree. But they like, like, hey, the wind blows through here. We can harness it's just that energy that's already It's going to be doing it anyway. Might as well. It's already doing it anyway. And like really spreading power and stuff to the rural areas of the country and spreading Spreading it around to to kind of bring the yeah. country forward yeah. in time. Move it up, yeah, right. Uh, and this game is all about building up Uruguay's uh, power supply effectively and yeah. how you use that. And it's kind of cool because certainly I'm trying to like do my thing and, yeah, and get you're what's trying done, to put your you windmills can, out and stuff. But like you that. can use like my bulldozers and stuff like that to help, and it's going to come at a little bit of a cost and all that. But like there is this. It's not cooperative by any means, but. The all the same, we all have the same goal yeah, exactly. in mind, That's you know, it is, and it's right. kind of cool. You're just trying to do your, do it a little better, right? Yeah, and there's this really cool kind of like balance between the cards you're playing, the, your action cards will dictate what you can do. And at the start, as you're kind of playing them on your player board, things are very expensive. As you play more of your cards out, the costs come down, but you have fewer options because you don't have as many of your action cards in hand. So figuring out when to get your cards back and then have to deal with more expensive costs again. Uh, and then how you start using your power and stuff once you get uh, your windmills built up yeah. and power plants and stuff. I just want to play with it's all just the cool. puzzles. It's got, you know, tool art, so it's like beautiful. Yeah, well, yeah, no, the it's... pieces are like super nice. It's such a cool theme. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm always just... about unique themes, yeah, right? Yeah, always, so, like, always. It. I'm like here on this game. I'm so excited for this game, yeah. yeah. Especially for a bigger, heavier game yeah, for us. Yeah. Like you give us that theme that makes it easier for us to get into something that is going to be a chunky game experience. Yeah. Oh yeah, so yeah that helps super excited for Montpero. Really, we're probably gonna back it. I'm, I'm just, yeah, we're hype, we're hype. Yeah. So that's number two, let's get to number one. Number one is a concept that I love. It's I think like, it's great. It's like games within games. <laughs> it's games within games, and it's also kind of a meta game commentary yeah. on chip theory. So chip theory games is the maker of uh, 20 Strong. Which is the number one, yeah. Chip theory games makes big, ridiculous, splashy, yeah. sprawly We like chip uh, theory, but their games are, yeah, they're humongous, tons of chunky and chips. And the kind of gimmick with them is they have these kind of poker chips yeah. for everything to... to That's what they do. We've co covered Cloud Spire for them here as an in focus. Yeah. And they have all these chips, which will track your health, what uh, the characters or whatever do, too many bones and stuff does oh, really stuff, well. Yeah. So 20 Strong is like, an, is a goal is to... No chips. Pair it down, no chips. You get 20 dice that make up your pool of dice, which you're hoping to roll successes on, and then essentially you have different decks of cards that are kind of set in different worlds yeah. and you're trying to make your way through that deck of cards yeah. before you you kind of, you know, bust yeah. out. You have the you know, like enemies, you're trying to get to like the main boss yeah. and stuff like that. You're trying to get through them and you're using these dice. But one of the coolest things about it is like the this is like that's like one st story, one deck of cards, but then they're essentially releasing decks in this 20 strong system from their other games. So there's yeah. a too many bones deck where you're yeah. running through a too many bones kind of scenario type thing, but in this you're gonna do game, lock picking because it's kind of it's gonna be stuff that evokes the game too many bones. Exactly, and then there's like Hoplomachus, and I'm sure they're gonna do Burn Cycle and probably Cloud Spire, all these things. And then as they come out with more and more games, they're just gonna keep out coming out with more and more decks for this to match their game. But you don't need the whole thing because you already have the dice for exactly. it. And stuff. You're like pretty set to go, so you just get this. New I just content. think it's such a cool idea. I, I do love too. these kinds of like I was a huge fan of Rolling Realms, which is like the yeah. Stonemaier Roll Right that's based. It's it's in Chip a, Theory's version of that is yes. exactly what it but is. But I love the concept of Rolling Realms, where it's like, hey, we have this big catalog of games. A lot of people really like Stonemaier games. Let's make a Rolling Right that's about a bunch of our little games. Yeah. This is kind of what Chip Theory is doing. I really am excited about this game. Yeah, me too. I think it's really cool. You're going to be rolling dice, trying to make your successes to get through each card. Uh, it's kind of gauntlet, essentially. 
I just think it's really intriguing. I think it's really smart, uh, like Stonemaier, now Chip Theory doing this because yeah. they do have a colorful world to play and in. And they both have very, um, very, very loyal fan bases. Big time. Right, right. Big it's like time. people who love Chip Theory games, like love Chip Theory games. There's big Stonemaier game fans. So it's just a cool idea to do. I, I think it's really cool. Yeah, I'm really excited for 20 Strong, personally. Yeah. I was, when I first saw it, like on the hunt, it's like, what, what, what is, is that? that? And then I click on it, it's like, oh, like I wouldn't have guessed any of this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And super fun. So that's number one. The very last thing we're gonna do is go over the 10 most played games of the month. So these are people who have logged their plays of things on uh, BGG, because we always just think it's kind of interesting to look at. Absolutely. So Mikey, number 10, it was Seven Waters Duel, which had 4,449 People would be playing plays. the crew, Quest for Planet 9, yes. usually is around here is a 4,756 wow. plays. This is the first time in a long time where both crews uh, the Crew Mission Deep Sea is number 11. Both crews were not on the list. I think that's yeah. the first time in a long time. Just missed. Spirit Island had 5,183 plays. Wow, wow, big game. Magic the Gathering, as you could typically expect, will show up is at uh, 5,225 plays. Terraforming Mars has 5,306 plays. Wow, we got Cascadia out here at 5,671. And Azul gets played a lot anyway, but it's on BGA now with 6,659 plays. Ark Nova out here doing it forever on 6,893 plays. A lot yeah. of a lot of zoos. Now we jump up, we got Wingspan, which has 9,710 plays. And the Marvel Champions back on top. Back on it's top. been it's been around, but not at the top. At 9,914, there's just a, a bunch of new X-Men content yeah. coming for that game. So I think people are extra And again, that's right with now. 1,512 players. So yeah. people who play Marvel United, Marvel uh, Champions play it a lot. Because it's, it's all, I think, almost exclusively played solo. Yes. Like very much the majority or people are, yeah. are and they're hitting it round after round after round. Yeah. There's boom, boom, always boom, boom. new content. That's probably why Spirit Island's on here because a lot of people play Spirit Island yeah. solo. Yeah. But unless that is the 10 most played games, let's get back over to the other set. Let's talk about some Murph picks. So my Murph pick is this insert right here, which was put up by Rua Knight. And here's the thing: this insert is hot. It is smoking hot. We're not even really big insert guys. We usually throw out almost every single insert that's in every single game. If it's game trays really, really good, we might leave it, but we kind of bag everything. But this insert is amazing. And we actually really do enjoy 3D printing because nerds love 3D printing and we're nerds. We have a 3D printer. We've actually used to have a series over on our channel about 3D printing stuff for board games. And we have done inserts. And I just think it's a really cool thing that board gamers who tend to like things like 3D printing make so much stuff like this. But this particular insert is so hot because every single spot for all the meeples for root are like literally shaped like that. It's not just like, they're just like a square that you put the cats in. No, no, no. It is tapered to fit the cat's ears and everything. Even like the little bit of like kind of jagged, like, you know, uh, spiky part on the back of those meeples heads. Even that has a little spot. Oh man, this is very well organized and it is very, very hot. And that's why I had to pick it from a Murph pick. So my Murph pick comes in the form of W. Eric Martin doing a preview kind of breakdown of a new Phil Walker Harding game. Praise be to Phil Walker Harding as we typically say here because we love him so much. Uh, there's this game Monolith, which is by Simon. Now Phil Walker Harding is known for doing kind of polyomino tiles, a lot of puzzly stuff and kind of has borrowed from other games of his to refine ideas. In Gingerbread House, you have these domino tiles that you're actually stacking up and in Monolith, you're kind of blending several of his games where you now have polyomino shapes, but they are 3D chunky kind of uh, blocks. And you are building in such a way that you're gonna build this monolith, this little four by four, I think by three or four cube. Uh, and you're gonna have to make this puzzle work in this now 3D space. There's different colors and stuff which are gonna matter. You're kind of making groupings of things as you build, you're trying to complete levels. So you can complete these, uh, get these tiles as a bit of a race. Every time you get a level, you can get the highest value kind of token. So you're racing to get those points there. You're trying to build to a certain kind of structural plan. So you wanna have the right colors in the right places. Phil Walker Harding does this kind of puzzly thing really well. I love taking a puzzle that might be normally kind of a flat, maybe stacking some stuff, but really building it into a 3D space where now you have these kind of Tetris pieces, but kind of having to deal with all the different axes and dimensions. We love Phil Walker Harding. I assume we're gonna like this game. So just seeing it, I was like, yeah, I'm all in instantly. And I was excited to have kind of a breakdown of like, this is how you set up the game. This is what the turns are gonna look like along with pictures and things along the way. So if you like Phil Walker Harding, this might be a game for you. It's certainly a game for me. I can't wait to try it. And that is my Murph pick. 
So that is some of our Murph picks, some cool things. Now, at the end of the video, we're going to talk about our personal favorite game we played this month, something we're super into. What are we into this month, Mikey? Man, I'm a fan of Board and Dice's tea games, you right? Are. Big fan. Teletum, or Teletum, I think is how mm -hmm. it's actually pronounced, is uh, a great one that incorporates really interesting dice drafting. You're doing a bunch of Europe stuff, as you can expect from Board and <laughs> yep. Dice. Yep. Very dry. Uh, but there's this great inverse relationship with these dice where if you choose a low value die, you're going to get fewer resources because you get resources equal to the pips, Indeed, but, but you get actions. a lot more action yeah. points. You get to do more stuff. And then the inverse that is true. That push and pull is always interesting. So it's like right? sometimes you really want resources, but fewer actions. Okay, I'll take the gold, you know? And so like just having those choices and then the way you can combo all the bonus tiles you collect. It does get combo. You can just do, there, there's going to be some turn you have that's just like bonkers yeah. though. And I love that. It's pretty that. cool. My favorite game was this month was actually Twilight Inscription. We didn't get a chance to pick this up at Gen Con, but I saw right. it at a couple at a game store, picked it up, and I actually really, really liked it. Neither I, I, Mike's never played Twilight Imperium. I played Twilight Imperium, didn't love it, but this is a big honking roll and write. It's like a two hour roll and write. It's a Twilight Imperium sized roll and write. Yeah. And I actually really, really liked it. It's actually not that complicated in terms of rules. No. It's a bit overwhelming because there's so many things on the boards that you're playing on, but for the most part, it's actually not that difficult. And I just really, really enjoy it. You just do a whole bunch of stuff i've we've played a uh, um one player two player three player it just plays well it kind of everything and any past three player you only ever care about your neighbors so it doesn't yeah. really matter that just much at time at that point i but. really really liked it i was very surprised at how much i enjoyed it and yeah it's a big beefy roll right that i'm into lots of combos and stuff yeah i agree that's a great pick we want to yeah. know in the comments what are some games that you've been playing whether they're new just new to you an old classic what have you been really enjoying yeah. What's got you excited for uh, SM releases? All that stuff. Let us know in the comments what's exciting to you on Board Game Geek. And until next time, I am Mike. I'm Nick. We are the Brothers Murph. That was the best of Board Game Geek. We'll catch you all next month. Bye, everybody.